ਮੇਰਾ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਰੇਡੀਓ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਰੇਡੀਓ ਯੂ ਐਸ ਏ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਰੇਡੀਓ ਯੂ ਐਸ ਏ ਸੁਣੀ ਰੱਖੋ ਤੇ ਮੋਜ ਬਣਾਓ ਮੋਜ ਬਣਾਓ ਮੋਜ ਬਣਾਓ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੁਣ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਇੱਕ ਸੋਚ ਕਮਲ ਗਿਲ ਦੇ ਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੇ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਰਿਕੀ ਗਿਲ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਯੂਐਸ ਕਾਂਗਰਸ 9th ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਰਨ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਰਿਕੀ ਗਿਲ ਟੂ ਇੱਕ ਸੋਚ ਹੈ ਕਮਲ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਔਨ ਯੈਸ ਰਿਕੀ ਵਾਟ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਰੈਪਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਦ ਕਾਂਗਰਸ Right. Well, uh, come up. I mean not yet, but I mean you're hoping to represent. Well, I like the way you're projecting and for- <laughs> forecasting this future. I'm couple. I'm confident. Um, well, I I appreciate the invite again. I'm running for Congress in California's 9th district and uh we were discussing this off air. All the districts in California and around the country ch- change shape and configuration. This right. is an entirely new district and there's so much here that I think has gone wrong and is problematic in the congressional district where I'm running. There's double the national unemployment rate. There's huge hardship. And yet when I announced my campaign Kummel in this new district which is centered on Stockton, California in the Central Valley, right. there wasn't a single state or federal representative who lived in this entire district. I mean, mm. there was such a huge vacuum of leadership. Right. And we're here to restore local representation and give people a voice in the process. That's great. Okay, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to be interested in politics. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think everybody has formative experiences. Um one of them for me was and I'm a young guy admittedly now come on when I win this race I'd be the youngest member of the entire United States Congress. So if you think wow. I'm young now, I was really young 7 years ago mm-hmm. and I was appointed by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger to the California State Board of Education. It was a tremendous honor and I fought for the California High School Exit Exam, which mm-hmm. we still have as a standard in California. I think that was one experience that mattered a lot to me and just being in this community I think we've seen all the all the travesties and the things that have gone wrong I would point to something else though sure. which is my father um who's a, a physician here and, and and a farmer also in the Central Valley like mm-hmm. my mother um he actually grew up in Uganda he grew oh. up in East Africa mm-hmm. and as many of your listeners will know for the Asian community in Uganda it was a terribly devastating experience when Idi Amin came to power right. in the 70s and for my grandfather it was a very searing time and i think on my father's side of the family there was an acknowledgement that if you don't get involved in the public process there's kind of a lot at stake and you can lose a lot right um and so that was always something in the background and and i suspect that was a factor too right well are there any other members in your family that have gone into politics or are you the first no i don't think any are, are as foolhardy as i am but oh. uh, there are plenty of doctors and, and and farmers and um and and business owners too and um i'm sure we'll get a chance to talk about some other family members but they sure. they have accomplished a lot in one generation sure sure well you know as you know i have my brother with me uh chenny pengali and uh, we're sharing uh, asking you questions so he has another question for you great wonderful uh ricky i understand you pursuing a law degree or do you have it already uh you know it's about uh, 10 days away from being conferred essentially oh done congratulations Wonder- congratulations Thank you. so uh, you're combining public service with a legal practice possibly your legal expertise um what exactly I- is your mission your personal mission and how does what you're uh, uh, about to do dovetail into that Well, I- I- great question. I mean, I think every every f- everyone in this country I think is entitled to some semblance of representation as you know as I outlined earlier. None of that exists in this current district. In fact, to date my opponent who's currently been in Congress for for 5 or 6 years, he still doesn't live in this district. He lives in the Bay Area, 50 60 miles outside of this seat. So restoring representation is vitally important. It's the critical quality of this campaign. Um in terms of my mission and my priorities i would say they're probably threefold one is empowering entrepreneurs and small business owners and and farmers my opponent um has uh has a, has an f rating from the american farm bureau and chunny this is an agricultural rural district it's because he's so beholden to special interests he's selling out the one economy we need to preserve here which is agriculture so defending the farmer and the entrepreneur is very important and that's regulations that's trade all sorts of policies i want to be an advocate not a foe he's been unhelpful 
Uh, the second thing is education reform. Johnny, I was on the State Board of Education, particularly for our community. Education is important. It's a path forward. It's a, it's a way of achieving progress. And we have a high school dropout crisis in, in the city of Stockton. I want to address this very, uh, in a very forthcoming way. And the last is transparency in government. I'm talking about cleaner, uh, smarter, smaller government. I shared the stage with the former governor of Florida, Jeb Bush, and this is something Governor Bush is, is tackling and is something that I'm advocating, whether it's a balanced budget amendment uh, at the federal level or also a single subject rule. So every bill in Congress only applies to one subject. These are ideas most Americans can rally around, and, and I'm advocating for them. Excellent. Excellent. Um, also, um, just uh, totally away from this, um, is there a person that of Indian origin that probably lives in U.S. that you admire? Well, there absolutely is. In, in fact, it's probably tough to cabin mm-hmm. my answer to just one person. But if I had to, you know, I would talk. Um, it, actually, I would. I would pick two. I'd pick two trailblazers in their own right: my paternal and my maternal grandfathers. You know, I'll talk about my nunna first. He's 98 years of age. Mm-hmm. And he is one of the biggest pistachio growers in California. He immigrated here decades ago, but, you know, never made an excuse and is still to this day working his heart out in Delano, California, seven mm-hmm. days a week. And and, and I think um, he really doesn't know the concept of rest. So when I'm in my mid-20s and a campaign is tough, it's, uh, it's, it's very easy to derive inspiration from someone like him. Mm-hmm. The second part of person is my grandfather on my father's side. He... Uh, uh, is a little younger than my nana, but also skipped around from India to Uganda and uh, really took his family uh, on an interesting journey, which I'm proud to call uh, part of my story, too. He was an entrepreneur and worked in the lumber business in East Africa and mm-hmm. uh, is just a very well-educated, soft-spoken, cerebral person and another inspiration of mine. Well, just to in, in terms of getting to know you before we uh, dig into politics, who are some of your favorite authors? Well, you know, I was thinking about that earlier, and, um, you know, there are a couple of books that I would point out, um, some of which are, are written by, by authors that I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't necessarily agree with politically, but I think they're skilled. Um, they're, they're skilled with the English language. One of them is Evan Thomas. He, uh, you know, he's more on the left end of the spectrum, and obviously I, I, I'm more conservative, but he wrote a terrific book, called The Man to See, and I know this is a very esoteric reference, but it was a book uh, about an attorney named Edward Bennett Williams, mm-hmm. who didn't come from much. He did not come from, um, you know, a, a background or a beginning that you would think would foretell great success, but that's exactly what he became. He was uh, a guy who was considered to be director of CIA, I think. He ended up becoming a very successful lawyer. He was, um, I think, a part part owner of the Baltimore Orioles baseball team, and just get a sense for the possibility of America in this book. Uh, in Edward Bennett Williams' life, he became so much more than anybody could have anticipated. And I think I see part of that story in my own family, you know, coming from humble origins and fighting with that immigrant mentality and persevering. And uh, I'd like to think we're importing that same quality in this campaign. That's that's one book that comes to mind. I'm um, very keen on nonfiction, so I read a lot of biographies, and, and that was one I recently finished up. Talking about getting to know you and our listeners can get to know you better and um, uh, decide, you know, are you representing them and whatever. So on that uh, line of questioning, what does it mean to you being Indian American? Mm-hmm. And also, does this ethnic background, do you think it's a plus for you or is it a hindrance for you? Well, you know, I think the Indian American community and particularly being a member of it is something that informs my understanding of so much in life. You know, I think we, um, the, the values of hard work, diligence, persistence, those are values that um, a lot of people in this community share, and I carry with them everywhere I go. So, um, you know, I, I, and I think in my own family we've affirmed the, the importance of that. It's also more generally just the immigrant story of coming to this country and fighting for things that are important to you. So um, I, I would like to think that uh, as part of this campaign, it's a fight nonetheless, and, and, and that uh, that forms part of the picture here. And in, in terms of this actual campaign, I, I think it's a plus, and, and there's uh, probably no two ways about it. In a district like this, the Republican Party 
uh, has often struggled to articulate the importance of its positions in um, in ethnic communities. And so when we go on offense and talk about charter schools and choice in public education, right. we talk about protecting the entrepreneur from unnecessary regulations. And when we talked about tort reform for physicians or uh, private property rights, uh, balancing the budget, if you aren't uh, effective as a messenger, the message is probably going to wither on the vine. And so um, being that kind of, having that background allows me to go places where the Republican Party typically doesn't go. And I think that makes me a more effective candidate. Right. Are you looking at uh, following the two governors that of uh, Indian origin are there? Is that something uh, finally a route? You know, I've, I've got my hands full with this campaign. And, and, and you know, in this, in this particular race, there's so much that's up for grabs. In this community, we've got a choice. Right. Do we want a congressman from the San Francisco Bay Area, or do we want someone from the Central Valley whose heart, allegiance, Mm -hmm. uh, and everything that's important is here and grounded here. And uh, and this is going to be a, a very closely contested House race. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell your listeners. Right. The National Republican Congressional Committee has targeted this campaign. Um, in fact, the chairman of the uh, National Republican Congressional Committee was just on Fox News Channel a week or two ago. He mentioned this race in particular as one to watch. Mm -hmm. So um, we're in the throes of a, of a real great struggle, and um, and I think we're going to prevail. Good. Okay. And, uh, Tony, you have a question? Sure. Uh, Ricky, I'm interested uh, in, your, in the three issues that you raised. Yeah. Let's talk about farmers and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What can a person like you really do at the local level? Uh, isn't that all determined at the national level? Well, I, I, as you know, you know, running for Congress is a seat in the federal legislature, and so on those particular items, here's what I would push for. For farmers, it's more foreign market access. My opponent, Jerry McNerney, voted against three trade agreements last year, South Korea, Colombia, Panama. That's a vote that hurts farmers. Farmers want to export their products around the world, and as a member of Congress, I'd fight for more trade and fewer regulatory burdens on farmers. You know, I think when a farmer is so busy complying with rules and regulations, it distracts them from making great produce, and, uh, and we're talking about that here. In terms of the entrepreneur, it's, again, wiping away the extraneous, frivolous regulation that gets in the way and, uh, and making sure the bureaucracy is passing rules that are consistent with economic growth. It has to be grounded in common sense. I think a congressman can, um, can advocate on that front. In terms, of, um, you know, in terms of education, which we spoke about, I want to welcome charter school philanthropy here. The, the, the thing that I've noticed in this district and throughout the Central Valley is we don't have the level of charter school startup activity that they have in the Bay Area or they have in Los Angeles. And if we had a member of Congress who actually lived here and was vocal on this issue, uh, more charter school philanthropy would come here. We could allow parents to really mobilize choice in public education. And um, that's something that all communities, including the Indian American community, can really engage with, which is a parent should, should really have a... Um, a high level of influence in their child's education. So I think a member of Congress can make an impact formally, but also informally by just stepping on the platform of leadership and making a difference. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Um, another question. You know, as you know, the U.S. has the lowest rates amongst the industrialized um, nations mm -hmm. of uh, participating in voting. Um, even in Australia, you know, s uh, and some other countries have better uh, participation almost up to 90 percent. U.S. is typically, you know, at 60 or sometimes has been less. Does that concern you? Well, you know, I'd like to see participation rates go up, but um, I'd like to see them go up as a function of genuine interest and engagement in political campaigns. And I think, you know, it's going to be campaigns like mine, which are organic, which are really um, on the ground floor here that I think will draw people out of the woodwork. We're seeing it uh, in our campaign, you know, very regularly in our office we get a lot of walk-ins, meaning people who come in unannounced and say, you know, I've heard about this campaign and there's something interesting that's brewing here. I want to get involved in Ricky's effort. It's very humbling to see, you know, so, so I think the votes that are going to be cast for me in this campaign will be cast in an affirmative way. It mm -hmm. won't be someone passively saying, you know, this this choice is uh, the lesser of two evils. I think it'll be someone saying, I actually am ready for a new generation of leadership. 
And when you have that current of excitement running through a campaign, it's very positive. You know, you bring people out, they're registering simply to vote for you, and we've seen many episodes of that here. You know, this area, particularly Stockton, has been stepped over in the national media. People look at it as a point of pride to finally get someone elected who's from here. You know, because at the end of the day, as, as Chani said, the great debates are happening in Washington, and the people of this district uh, deserve some some level of legitimate input, and it's not going to happen with a Bay Area congressman. Yeah, good. I mean, how can we motivate our youngsters about our civic duty? How, I mean, what is it that we can do? Well, you know, in our campaign, I think, you know, just for your listeners' sake, if, if they don't know, um, and, and many might not, I'm in my mid-20s. And so the, the sort of younger constituency isn't always uh, keen on the Republican Party, given the, the certain stereotypes that have been uh, brought about upon us. But in our campaign, they're coming out of the woodwork for us. And there's something that you can do as a function of being a young person, which is motivate and mobilize young people to look at themselves in the mirror and say, I can make a difference, too. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and we're doing that here. You know, a lot of young people here in this community, in San Joaquin County in particular, I think they feel disengaged. That's why there's a high school dropout crisis. And for them to be able to see someone like myself, who's born and raised here, possibly go to Washington and have an impact at the federal level, I think is going to give them hopefully a shot in the arm that that they can do this too, that they can do anything they set their sights on. And and there's a signaling effect to success. Right. And if my success produces that effect, I'd be very humbled by it. Right. That's the beauty of uh, this country. You know, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you choose. And, um, you know, if you have the stamina, you know, you can do anything, right? Sure. Right. Jenny, what about um, your y- question? Yeah. Um, Ricky, in, in addition to those three issues, I, I'm thinking that Indian Americans face uh, other issues, one of which is uh, we've been the target of some discrimination in the wake of 9-11, and, and that keeps resurfacing every you know six months or so. We hear another incident against uh, people wearing turbans. Are you concerned about things like that? Have you <clears throat> been involved at any level in terms of giving voice to those people who feel that they have become victims as a result of what happened 10 years ago, 11 years ago? You know, Chani, I'm concerned about all acts of discrimination, you know, and I will tell you that whenever someone has an arbitrary burden that is placed on their shoulders, whether it's by way of a stereotype or a preconception, it's just wrong. And it pains me to see that, um, you know, still in a country of ours, it might exist, and my hope is that we continue to diminish and uh, and marginalize and minimize uh, those numbers of, of 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 acts of discrimination because it um, it is inconsistent with the American spirit. But in the particular case of the Indian American community, I think we do need to uh, potentially elevate awareness um, about what this community stands for and represents and. Uh, I think as individuals, this community has been very successful, whether it's as physicians or farmers or business people. I think as a community, uh, there is still this tendency to, um, to, to be isolated and to act as individuals. And I think um, you know, the success of someone in the, in the public arena can elevate the awareness of what this community stands for. And, um, and I think, you know, for example, when we win this race, a lot more people will be aware of, of, of our identity and, uh, and what it means to be who we are. To see Sunre Iksoch Kamal Gil de Na, the Ajasi interview Kare, Ricky Gil, JDK, US Congress, the 11th district was the run Kare. So, Unanu Apni Sarandi Lorda, Ki Unanu support Kare, the Unanu Jataye. So, uh, Ricky, as we were talking earlier, we're going to go on a little bit of a lighter note. Um, did you play any sports or anything while you were in high school or in college? Well, you know, I played tennis. I was much better then than I am now. Uh, uh-huh. Kind of with, without practice, your skills tend to rust. But, you know, these days I try to pick up a basketball whenever I can. And um, what, I think it's important to always have digressions from the, the rigors of the day-to-day. And, you know, in politics, you've you got to take the long view. You know, I've got six and a half more months until this election is finally complete. Right. And um, we obviously have one on June 5th, but the eventual election is November 6th. And 
Right. You've got to take time out uh, every now and then. What what other things do you do to relax besides? Well, you know, I think catching up with uh, with friends who might not live in the area is important. Um, and obviously, we've got some new technology um, such as Skype that enables you to do that. And mm-hmm. uh, I like to catch up on on some reading, some leisure reading from time to time. But um, you know, I, I would say actually physical activity is very important. I also uh, I, I think. To, to maintain, uh, to reduce your stress, but also to be physically fit. So you can uh, fulfill a couple of different objectives there. Wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, my, my program is always about positive thinking. Yep. So I want to shoot a uh, question at you. I mean, how do you st- keep yourself positive? Well, I mean, I think I always remind myself of the tremendous honor that I have given that so many people are placing their trust and confidence in me. You know, Kamal, this is a congressional district with 700,000 people. Of course, not all of them are registered to vote. Ultimately, I think we have about 220,000 registered voters. And to be able to put yourself out there um, for their approval is still a tremendous honor. And I think we're going to win this race because we're going to garner more trust in my opponent. But uh, it is a blessing to, to see, I think, and to witness what my family's been able to do in one generation. You know, when my mother and father immigrated here, they had bounced around, as you know. My father was raised in Africa and then went to school in Europe and probably never could have imagined the day of seeing his son run for the United States Congress in a competitive district. But that's, I think it shows you the power of positive thinking in their lives. And uh, in my life, uh, you know, there are certainly up and down moments, but uh, taking the long view, it's been a very, very positive trajectory. As I mentioned to you, the former governor of Florida, Jeb Bush, was out here campaigning for me. Someone you mentioned, Nikki Haley, the governor of South Carolina, was here in November. So to be in this kind of a national race, uh, particularly in your mid-20s in a community you care about, is a tremendous role of responsibility. Responsibility. I'm very honored. So with having all this um, uh, around you, how do you stay grounded? Well, I've got I've got a family and a bunch of friends and actually staff members who, some of whom you've interacted with on my staff, who uh, who enforce humility, uh, and we all we don't we don't take it we don't take ourselves too seriously, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, I think you also understand that people have extraordinary problems in this district. You know, as I mentioned, double the national unemployment. I have young people come who come to me, who. Um, who say, you know, Ricky, I'm not sure I should even stay in high school because I have to help out my father who just lost his job or I have to supplement my mother's income. These are real problems. People can't find a job. They, uh, the, public, the level of public debt is going through the roof, and we have a mortgage crisis in this district, all sorts of problems. And I think you need to take stock of the fact that uh, people are placing confidence in you, and the process exists to solve these problems. And I've just stepped up to make a sacrifice, but I think it's, in a way, nothing like the sacrifice people are making in their in their lives here in this district, and we've got to fix that. Right. Isn't Stockton one of the uh, highest areas with the foreclosures? Absolutely. You know, it's it's one of the highest in the country, maybe second only to Las Vegas. I talked about this on Fox News Channel. There's just a vicious cycle that has developed here from foreclosures to then so much private indebtedness that people... Um, aren't spending like they used to, and then the economy has just been in an overall downturn. So we're focusing on reviving our agriculture industry. As you know, my opponent's been bad for farmers. I want to be a friend to them. And then we've got to diversify our economy. But it all gets back to a more talented workforce, and uh, and we're insisting on educational improvement in this campaign. I think it all starts at home, and it all continues with a young child's education. Right. Um, what is the one thing that hit the farmers over the last, let's say, a decade? What is the worst one thing that really hurt them the most? Well, I would say it's kind of a multi-pronged assault that they've faced here. I think they want to be able to export their products. It's a difference between my opponent and myself. He doesn't believe in trade. I do. I think they've faced hyper-regulation, the sort of regulation that doesn't take stock of the economic cost uh, upon farmers. And so... At the end of the day, they need more advocates in Congress. And um, and I think particularly for our community, the reason agriculture has so much resonance is it's uh, even folks who are professionals and physicians in the Central Valley and engineers uh, from, from the Punjabi community tend to be farmers too. So right. it has um, 
It has a very strong grip on the imagination, but for this entire district, it is a $2 billion-plus annual industry, and, and it's something I want to protect. Right. Well, uh, Rick, we're going to ask you one of the last questions, and I'm uh, going to turn the mic to Jenny, and okay. uh, then we'll let you go. I know you have um, you know, commitments. Ricky, I I wanted you to know that over the last uh, three or four years, I have gone to San Joaquin County and uh, spoken at the state EDD offices to people who are out of work Mm -hmm. to uh, share with them uh, techniques on how to write their resume, to polish, and how to become positive and go about job search. I have received uh, countless uh, letters of gratitude from that and where people have really found work from that. So I've been um, doing that as a personal mission, uh, absolutely gratis, for about six years now. Well, you, that's terrific work. I mean, I I think you've definitely then been, um, you have firsthand accounts as to what's gone wrong here. And, Chani, I think we need new economic development. We're talking about skilled immigration reform, which might not be a very exotic topic, but we need to bring a new generation of job creators here to the Valley, particularly to San Joaquin County and um, rest assured that that would there would be, frankly, no priority greater than that upon uh, upon winning this election. Wonderful. So, in closing, you know, let me wish you the very best, and and do call on us if we can help you in any way. Great. And I would just you know come on, Chunny, one more time. I draw your listeners to rickygill dot com, and uh, if they like this message and it resonates with them. I would be humbled to have their support, and they can make a an online financial donation there. Very good, Ricky. And thank you for taking time out, and we wish you all the best and um, all the success that sure. you I, wish upon yourself. I appreciated this opportunity. And thank, thank you, so you for much. giving us your time. Take care. Punjabi Radio USA Punjabi Radio USA America's Punjabi Adi Apni Awaaz Apni Awaaz